Hi, and welcome to the Pesticide Vendor Certification course. Today we're going to be talking about human health as it applies to pesticides. One of the concepts to understand is how do we come up with risk? How do we evaluate risk when it comes to working with pesticide? There's two things we need to consider and look at this formula. One is the toxicity of the pesticide and multiplying that by our exposure to the pesticide. So toxicity is, is defined rather as a measure of how harmful or poisonous a pesticide is. It's often measured in LD50. Uh, exposure is a measure of the contact that you have with that pesticide. So let's think about this formula. If we're working with a very, very highly toxic pesticide and we do all the things we're supposed to do according to the label, wearing personal protective equipment, uh, working under proper safe conditions, and our exposure is very low, we would therefore have low risk with using that pesticide. However, the opposite is also true. If we're working with a pesticide that is not very toxic, however, we're careless, we don't feel we need to wear our personal protective equipment, which is totally wrong, and our exposure is extremely high, we could actually have a higher risk um, by dealing with a pesticide in that manner. So always remember toxicity times the exposure is the risk that you have when working with a pesticide. There are two types of toxicity to think about as well. There's the acute toxicity, which is the toxic response that results from a single dose or exposure to a pesticide over a short period of time. An example of that as when we're filling a sprayer, we're working with concentrated uh, pesticide straight out of the jug or container, uh, and we get a spill on ourselves, that is acute toxicity. It's a one-time thing, and um, we may have toxic response from that. Chronic toxicity, on the other hand, is a toxic response that results from repeated exposure of a pesticide over a longer period of time. Uh, so if over the years you're not always as careful as you should be and you're constantly getting a little bit of pesticide into your system, that's a long-term chronic toxicity that you're going to develop. I mentioned earlier about uh, acute toxicity. How do we measure it? Um, it's the lethal dose uh, or LD50. It's a statistic estimate of a pesticide dose which will kill 50% of the test animals within a stated period of time. This is measured in milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So the smaller the animal or person, the more effect the same given amount of pesticide would cause. This is why we always see uh, warnings to keep uh, anything that's poisonous or toxic away from small children, because it takes a very minute amount to cause the same toxic or deadly effect uh, than it would with an adult. How do they calculate the LD50? Um, so they will do uh, testing on animals. Uh, so they'll have a group in this example that we see in this chart, they'll have a group of 20 animals and uh, where they get no dosage of the pesticide and none of the animals uh, died. Uh, the first test that they did in this example is they gave 6 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of the pesticide to 20 animals. Uh, in that example, none died as well. The next group, so again, a third different group of animals, they'll give 12 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, and they found that four uh, of the animals died in that test. The next test, 36 milligrams per kilogram uh, of body weight, 20 animals, 11 died. And when they were up to 72 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, uh, of that 20 animals tested, 19 died. So in this example, looking at, it was approximately, the LD50 is approximately 36 milligrams per kilogram. It killed about half of the animals. So there's not only pesticides that we have LD50s for. There's other products that we may have in our home or, or deal with on a daily basis. So for example, uh, aspirin, um, depending on which literature you look at, but aspirin has the uh, LD50 of 200 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. 
Tylenol, 2,402 milligrams per kilogram. Pure caffeine, not just your regular cup of coffee, but pure caffeine, 192 milligrams per kilogram. Something you may have in your shop, brake cleaner, it's greater than 2,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So remember that LD50s are specific to the test animal as well. Some animals are more susceptible than others. When we think of the results of, of toxicity and being exposed to pesticides, um, there are several things that can happen. When it comes to chronic toxicity, we may have a sensitization, uh, which is a reaction to the chemicals developed over time. So we may become very sensitive that any exposure to them will cause uh, different reactions in your body. We can have allergies to these products, uh, reactions from contact with allergens, and carcinogenicity, which is the ability of a product to cause cancer. This is an agriculture health study. It was finding findings from 25 years of study from 1993 to 2018. So a little while ago, um, but in this uh, example, we see things like uh, metallochlor, uh, chlorofrost, diazinon were associated with developing lung cancers. Parkinson's disease was more common in participants with more lifetime days of pesticide use who reported a high exposure event. So they were, they had a spill and had a lot on them. Diabetes was more common in farmers with greater use of organochloride insecticides, while diabetes during pregnancy was more common in women with pesticide exposures during early pregnancies. Farmers who wore chemically resistant gloves when mixing and applying 2,4-D had 70% less pesticide in their urine than most not wearing gloves. Orchard farmers wearing gloves when applying captan had 80% less pesticides on their hands. An aggressive form of prostate cancer was associated with greater use of malathion and turbofos by farmers. DDT, lindane, pyrethrin, diazonon, and turbofos were associated with some forms of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Age-related macular degeneration was associated with chloridane, DDT, malathion, and captan. Protective gloves use and hygiene practices were associated with reduced rates of Parkinson's disease among farmers using Paraquat, Perithrum, and Trifluralin. Alichlor was associated with higher rates of laryngeal cancer. Glyphosate was not associated with overall cancer risk in these findings. So, we need to consider the roots of exposure and protect ourselves accordingly. Oral exposure is the ingestion of a pesticide. Dermal or ocular exposure is uh, when it's on your skin or in your eyes. And think about your eyes, they're moist, there's no barrier there. Uh, if you get pesticide in your eyes, it's instantly into your system. Res respiratory exposure, of course, is inhalation through your lungs. Another thing we need to consider is take home exposure of pesticides. So research studies have shown that family members can easily be exposed to pesticides without realizing it. You can prevent take home exposure of pesticide. Clean items like door handles, steering wheels, water taps, and telephones. If you touch them with gloves that have had pesticides on them, you could accidentally expose someone else to that pesticide. Vacuum vehicles to remove pesticide residues. Remove your protective clothing before you get into your truck, car, or sprayer or tractor. If you don't, you can leave traces of pesticide inside. Keep clothing contaminated with pesticides away from the family laundry. Store in a safe, store it safely until it can be washed. Wash it separately. Follow the instructions given on the protective clothing and personal protective equipment section of the manual. So remember, it's easily done um, that take home pesticide if you're not careful. Thank you for listening and have a great day.